In this video, we're gonna set up your inventory. So to get started, we're gonna to go to the inventory tab. Here you can see all your inventory. So the first thing we'll look at is what your inventory kind of looks like. You might have a few items sitting in here. I have a whole bunch. Um, and the first column, you'll see product ID or part number. Then you'll see part uh, product type, your brand, how much quantity you have on hand, how much you've sold in the last 30 days, your default costs, that's kind of what you buy it for, and your retail price is what you sell it to your customers for, who your supplier or suppliers are on each uh, part, um, and when this item was last active, as well as notes and tags. And if you don't know what tags are yet, you can check out the tag video. So to see more information on a particular part, you can click on this little arrow here and it'll give you kind of a quick view to some additional fields of that product. Um, so it gives you kind of a bit of more information, but to see the full details on that part, you can click into the part number itself and this will show you everything about this part. So here you'll see the inventory type is a vehicle part. The product type is engine oil filter. Here's my base unit of measurement. Uh, this link here will also show you that it's linked to the part catalog already, which is great when it was created. If we scroll down a bit, uh, you can add your UPC. Uh, quantity on hand is how much you have on hand. Your minimum order quantity, uh, your max order quantity. So you can set those as your min max, and that'll help you when replenishing these items later on. You can also see your base cost and retail. A bit lower, you'll see uh, your brand, so you can change or edit your brand if you wanted to, as well as the suppliers that are on these, this part, uh, and your tags, which right now I don't have any tags, but you could add tags there. Uh, finally, is the item tax exempt, yes or no? So you can flip this flag if you want it to be tax exempt. And then there's a couple other fields here that will help you with replenishing this item. So first thing is, is the item replenishable, yes or no? This will help later on when it comes to placing purchase orders. Uh, is the item sellable? Yes or no. If you have maybe an obsolete item or something that is on recall that you can't sell, you can flip that to no so you don't sell it by mistake. And lastly, do you want to track this item in your inventory metrics? So if you want to track this item in your in-stock metrics, you would leave it as yes, trackable. If you didn't want to track it, maybe because it's an obsolete item or something that's not as important, you can flip this to no. Uh, lastly, the other thing you can do on this page is you can receive and adjust inventory for this part. So if I receive this part, I can click the receive button. I can receive a few units and hit save. And lastly, I can also make an adjustment. So I can come here, I can look that my on hands are eight. Let's say I did a count and oh no, there's actually only six in stock. So I can make an adjustment. I can pull my on hands back down to six and hit save and you'll see that there's a record here showing an adjustment uh, had happened. Now this uh, change history table will show your receivables, your adjustments, and also every sale of uh, one of these filters. Um, so this is kind of like a, a full change history table on what's happening on this part. And a little bit lower will show a cost breakdown on the part. So I've been receiving the cost at $0, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's add, let's receive this item um, at a dollar as an example and hit save, and you'll see now that I have four units uh, at a dollar. If I received additional units, let's say I received six units at $2, you'll see another line here showing I have six units at $2, four units at $1, and the whole system is first in, first out, so FIFO. Um, so your cost of goods sold on every invoice will be 100% accurate based on the unit that was used uh, when that uh, invoice was created. Next, we're gonna talk about creating the actual parts or products. So let's jump out of this part. Uh, and next, we're gonna go up here to add products. We're gonna go to the add products tab and there are two main ways to add products. So the first way is by you know individual products. So we can go by product. And the second option is a bulk upload where you can go by brand and upload a whole bunch of parts in one go. So let's start with the buy product section where you can add individual parts. Within that, there are three types of products you can add. You can add a vehicle part. That's your cabin air filters, your oil, air, your oil filters, uh, and most of the parts you're gonna use on vehicles. The second type is vehicle fluid, which that's gonna be your engine oil and other fluids. And then lastly, there is an other bucket. 
basically this is only anything that is not a part or fluid. So kind of just random one-off uh, separate part types that you want to create on your own. You should mainly be using uh, parts and fluids. So let's start by creating a part. So I'm going to create a Wix cabin air filter. I have the part number here. So it's a 24007. I'm going to type in the part number and I'm going to hit find part info. When I click that, the system looks up that part number in the part catalog and tries to find the correct part. So you'll see in the catalog, there's a whole bunch of parts that have that same part number. So we have to specify and say, yeah, we want this Wix cabin air filter. We don't want any of these other parts. We want this Wix cabin air filter. So I'm going to select that. And by selecting that, it's going to auto generate a whole bunch of the information for you. So you don't need to load it yourself. So we know it's a Wix filter. We know it's a cabin air filter already. So the part type has already been defined, which is great. So a bunch of that info is done for you. Sometimes there's an image, which is also an added bonus, but not all the time. If I scroll a bit lower, I can add my own UPC if I want to. I can also add my on hand. So I'll just say I have one on hand for now. I can add my minimum uh, quantity and max quantity. So let's say I always want to have two and I want to have a max of four at a time. I can add my cost. So I'll do uh, two and five for my retail. Uh, I'm going to leave tax exempt as no. And I'll leave, leave all my replenishable, sellable, and trackable flags as yes. I can add additional notes here. I can also add a brand. So I'm going to want to use my Wix brand. There's my Wix brand. And if I don't have a brand yet, remember, if you haven't created your brands yet, you can just hit new brand and create Wix as a brand. So I'm going to type in Wix and select brand. I'll add one of my suppliers. So let's say I'm getting this from AutoZone. Um, and I don't need any tags. So I'm going to do all that and I'm going to hit save in uh, save to inventory. And that item is now saved. So if I go back to inventory now, you're going to see there's the cabin air filter I just created. Again, there's the green link. The green link means this part is linked to the part catalog. Why that's really important is because every time a car comes in, the system will look this part up in the part catalog and the green link shows that it's linked to uh, a part in the part catalog. So that's how it's actually going to look it up. The only exception to that is you don't need that on oil because oil doesn't really use the part number for the lookup capability. Oil uses viscosity and blend. Okay, so we created a part. That's great. Uh, again, if you wanted to edit it, you can click into it again and go through all the editing that we talked about uh, before. Let's go back to adding a product. So we did it by part number. That's great. Next, let's do it by uh, fluid. So I'm going to click over to the fluid section. And let's say we want to add an engine oil. To add an engine oil, I'm going to check this box that says engine oil. And what that does is it kind of presets a bunch of the info. So it makes it a bit easier for you when creating an engine oil. For example, the first thing that shows up is the fluid type is already set to engine oil. So you don't have to worry about that. The next step is what is the viscosity for this oil? So I'm going to say uh, I'll load a 5W30. So 5W30. The next question is, what is the formulation? I will load a full synthetic. Next is, what is the brand? So let's say I'm loading a mobile one. I'm going to type in mobile one. I have the brand. Great. So what's really cool is the system will kind of auto generate a product ID for you. Now you can change this if you don't like it, but whatever you do with your product IDs when it comes to oil, just make sure it's consistent across all your oils so that you don't have different naming conventions. So I like this, it's 5W30. It shows me it's mobile one uh, and it shows me a little short form for full synthetic. So I like that and I'm gonna leave it as is. But again, if you wanted to, you could change this to whatever you wanted. Uh, just make sure it's consistent so you don't have all these funny naming conventions behind your different oils. I'm gonna scroll down a bit lower. The next thing is what is the base unit of measurement? So I'm gonna select in here and I'm gonna use quartz because I wanna track this in quartz. And what is my on hand? I will say I have 20 quarts. I'm going to leave min max for this part um, and I'm going to add my cost as well. So let's say uh, two and five bucks and I'm going to leave the rest of that stuff and I'm going to oh, actually yeah, I'll add my supplier and I'll hit save to inventory. And that's it. And you could actually have multiple parts at a time you could be creating. You can you know do multiple and type in your part numbers or look up a fluid. Uh, so it's pretty flexible in how many you can work with. If I go back to the inventory tab now, you'll see there's the oil I just created. So you'll see my, my product ID uh, as well as all the information. 
Okay, next, let's go back to add products again. And this time we're gonna add by brand. So what this lets you do is we have roughly the top 25 brands that most of our customers use in this list. And this just lets you load a bunch of filters much quicker and easier. Um, if you don't see your filters in here, that's okay, or sorry, your brands in here, that's okay. It does not mean that the catalog doesn't have those brands. This is just the top few brands to help you load these items a bit quicker. So it's not there, don't worry about it. Go to uh, part type, type in your part number and I'm sure it will come up. Um, this is just has a small list of a few of the brands so that you can create these parts a bit quicker. So for example, let's say I was using Wix filters. I'm gonna select Wix. When I select Wix, you'll see here that there are 15,000 parts in this little like Wix catalog that we have. Uh, I don't wanna load all those, that's way too many. So I can then click here to say, you know, which specific parts do I wanna load? Let's say I wanna do uh, some cabin air filters. So when I select cabin air filters, there are now 521 cabin air filters in this whole list. You'll see here, you can load a maximum of 500 parts at a time. Um, but again, I don't wanna load that many right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through these and decide which ones of these I like or, or I wanna use. So let's say I wanna use this one, this one, this one, this. If you want to select all, you could select all up here, but I'm just gonna choose, I don't know, we'll choose 10. Let's say I wanted to load those 10 filters. Okay, so now here are the 10 I wanna load. If I didn't want one of these, I can exit back out and add a different one back in. So those are the 10 I'm going to create. So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna choose the brand for these 10. So I want my Wix brand. So let's type in Wix. There's my brand for Wix. Who's my supplier for these? I'll say it's AutoZone. You can have multiple suppliers, but only one active supplier at a time. So you could have both on there. Um, my on hands for all of these, I'll bring them all in at zero on hands. I'll put all my min maxes to one, two for now. Um, and my cost on these, I'll say they're all two bucks and five bucks. Now, when you're doing a mass upload, all these um, fields are gonna be the same for all parts. So uh, you can of course edit this later on, but if, you, if most of them have the cost of two bucks and the retail of five, then you're better off putting it on there and then only going and back and editing the ones that need to change later on. So that applies to most of my parts. I'm gonna hit save to inventory. It's gonna ask you, hey, you're adding 10 parts. Are you okay with that? I'm gonna say yes, and that's it. So now those are created. If I go back to inventory, you'll see there, here are all 10 of my cabin air filters that are Wix. So that's great. It helps you get a lot of items in there much quicker than doing it manually. Um, the next thing that's great is the ability to bulk edit items. So remember before, if you wanted to edit one of these items, you can click on the item and you can edit all these fields within. So that's great. But what if I wanted to edit a whole bunch of items at the same time? So to do that, you can use the selection tool on the left to select the items you wanna work with, and then you can edit uh, multiple items at the same time. Now keep in mind, if you select everything, you're gonna lose that edit button. And the reason you're looting, uh, losing that is because you probably selected maybe some oils or some fluids and some parts, and they're all very different. So it's not gonna let you bulk edit. So when you bulk edit, just make sure you're working on items that are the same uh, product type. So for example, if I wanna edit all these filters I just created, I'm gonna select all these filters. I can select all 10 of these, even easier than this actually. I can do this, I can go to filter instead. Um, I can say, okay, let's filter by my product type. I wanna see all my cabin air filters. So these are now all my cabin air filters. And let's say actually I even want to go by brand, just my Wix. So here are my 11 Wix cabin air filters. Now I can select all and edit all of these at one go. So now it shows you I'm editing all of these 11 Wix filters. And these are all the fields I can edit on all of them. So I can change my on hand, my min max quantities. I can change my uh, cost or my retail simply just by changing the figure, or I can even change my cost based on a percent increase, or I can change my retail based on a percent increase. So if I wanted to change, increase the retail of all those items by 10%, I could just come here and toggle this open. I can enter 10%, I can hit save, and that's gonna uh, change all these items to an increase uh, retail price of 10%. So you'll see now they're all at 550. But if they were all different numbers before, they would have all equally gone up by 10%. So there's a whole bunch of ability to um, edit 
bulk sets of inventory items uh, in a much quicker fashion than you could do it before. Okay, next let's talk about the metrics tab. So to see your inventory metrics, you can click up here to the metrics tab. And this is gonna show you some basic information about your inventory. So on the top left here, you'll see your inventory at cost. That is of all the inventory you're holding, what is the value at the cost that you bought it for basically? So I'm holding $11,000 worth of inventory. Um, same thing, what is your inventory value at retail? In this case, I have 24,000 worth of inventory. On the right side here, you'll see what is your sales over the last 30 days. This is a demo account, but it's only showing 20 bucks as well as it allows you to download that report to show all of your sales of all your items over the last 30 days. Below that, there's also a couple charts that'll show you in stock and days on hand. So these in stock reports will show you um, the in stock levels of each of your part types. So you'll see here, uh, if I unselect a few of these and look at just air filter as an example, that's my in stock of air filters. I have only 10 air filters. All 10 were in stock for a while. And then you'll see here it dipped off and only, uh, I had, I guess, more filters were loaded in and only 10 of 20 filters, 10 of 18 filters were in stock. So this kind of just shows you your in stock levels of all your different part types. Next, let's talk about the scanner page. So the scanner page allows you to just scan UPCs or scan your products that you have. Um, and this is super helpful when you go to do your counts. So you can use the camera in your device, the camera in your phone or your tablet, and simply click the scan UPC button. The, the camera will prompt up and then you can scan the UPC with your phone. Um, and then from there you can adjust your on hands and make any adjustments. You could also use an external scanner so you can get a Bluetooth scanner off Amazon uh, for 30, 40 bucks um, and use that to scan your inventory items as well and do counts and edit uh, inventory. The other things to look at in inventory are your brand profiles. So as you're creating all these different brands, you'll just have simple profiles that show you uh, the brand as well as how many products have that brand. If you wanted to edit this profile, you can go ahead and hit the edit button. You can change the name of the brand. You can add a description. You can add a website URL and you can even add a contact person at that brand if that's like your rep that you're, you're working with. Similar to brands uh, is suppliers. So suppliers are who you're buying the products from. Uh, but very similar as you can see, uh, this is my supplier AutoZone. I buy 45 products from them. Um, if I, I wanted to edit that profile, I can jump into it. I can uh, edit the name as well as an internal uh, name for myself just to keep track of stuff, as well as a description, an address, phone number. You can add a logo as well, internal notes, uh, lead time, minimum purchase quantities, uh, as well as the contacts for the different reps maybe at the supplier. So you can save all that information. Um, and that's gonna help you massively when it comes time to create purchase orders inside a drop top, which that's the last feature that's coming soon. So in the next month or so, we will have a whole uh, purchase order functionality that's gonna allow you to create purchase orders in a much more automated fashion. So more to come on that soon. And that's it. Overall, that's how inventory works. Good luck setting everything up and reach out if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.